Welcome to the Full Nelson. Today I'm going to be doing a review on the Franke Affinity 12 gauge shotgun, which is this one that's disassembled up here, and talk to you guys about why I feel that this is one of the best designs of any auto loading shotgun ever built, and why I feel that it is one of the best auto loading shotguns available on the market today. Now I have this gun disassembled so that you guys can see why I feel that this shotgun is such a phenomenal design. For those of you who are not familiar with shotguns, I'm going to try to walk you through some of the differences between an inertia-driven shotgun and the differences between an inertia and gas-driven shotgun. And I'm also going to try to explain to you how this inertia-driven shotgun is different from other inertia-driven designs. I'm also going to talk to you about how this design relates to a pump-action design, which any of you who know anything about shotguns may think that, well, semi-automatic shotguns don't really relate to pump-action shotguns, but this one does in one very unique way, so I'm going to talk about that. And for any of you who know anything about shotguns, um, this will just show you some of the differences between the Franke Affinity and shotguns you're already familiar with. So, let's get started. This shotgun is an inertia-driven shotgun. What that means is that when you have a round in the chamber of this barrel, when you fire the gun, the forces between the lead trying to go down range and the shell trying to go backwards are what cycle the action of the shotgun. That force alone is what cycles the action on an inertia-driven shotgun. So Benelli's that are inertia-driven, it's the same principle. It's the force of the lead trying to go down range and pushing against and having the gunpowder in between. Basically that cartridge is trying to blow in two different directions if it were not contained in a gun the cartridge would, would simply fly two different directions. The fact that it's contained within a gun, you experience some recoil, but all the lead goes downrange. Now, what they, as I mentioned with the inertia-driven design, those forces pushing against each other are what cycle the action. Now, on a gas-driven design, you have, well, I want to call, well, there's gas ports drilled on the bottom of the barrel right here. Well, usually it's not right here where the thing is, or right here where the shell is in the action. It's actually just in front of that. So anywhere up here, there will be ports drilled in the bottom of the action, and most of the designs I've seen are gas piston designs for shotguns, which means that the gas does not directly get shot through a port or a hose or, you know, the term, whatever term would be most understandable for any of you who are new to this. Um... The gas is not pushed directly into a gas key like on an AR-15 that cycles the action. Instead, the gas is channeled to two metal pistons, or one metal piston, or there's a few different designs that are out there, but it's channeled to pistons, so what happens is some of that gas that is channeled through ports in the barrel pushes those pistons, and those pistons interface with the bolt, and they cause the bolt to cycle. There are advantages and disadvantages to an inertia system, and there are advantages and disadvantages to the gas system. Gas systems usually have softer recoil. Inertia-driven guns usually require less maintenance or a little bit cleaner. You don't have to clean a gas system. There are gas systems that are available on the market today that they claim don't need cleaning. And I've had one of them in particular, which was the Versamax, and in my experience, it didn't really need to be cleaned but what would happen is the gas would build up in um, the piston design on that gun. There would get to be carbon buildup around inside those pistons, inside of those little tubes. And what would happen is the reason why they say it doesn't need to be clean is because those pistons are designed to where they will scrape that carbon off of the walls and blow it out the top of the gun. So when the gun would get dirty, it would continue to cycle, but it would start blowing all sorts of debris and everything out between the gaps in the, in the forearm. Anyway, so yeah, that's the way that particular gun worked, and it had some advantages and disadvantages, but it was really soft shooting and stuff like that. Now, I want to talk to you about how um, I've explained the difference between the operation of a gas piston design and an inertia-driven design. Now I want to talk about this inertia-driven design and gas-driven designs, one of the major differences that this has. Now most inertia and gas-driven shotguns, on the back of the bolt there is a triangular piece of metal that is pinned in place. Well, I shouldn't say triangular. It's basically just a straight piece of metal that's pinned in place. And what that piece of metal does is it goes all the way back here 
runs all the way to the back here, the start of this buttstock, and there is a plunger and a buffer tube assembly in the buttstock of the shotgun. So when the gun cycles, in order for it to go back into battery, that piece of metal on the back of the bolt that runs back in here interfaces with that, and as the bolt comes back, that whole mechanism slides in here, and then it goes back into battery. Almost every gas-driven, modern gas-driven, and auto-loading driven, or gas-driven and inertia-driven shotgun have that on the back of the bolt. The Franke Affinity does not. And this is where I'm going to get into kind of how it correlates with the pump action design. The Franke Affinity doesn't have anything on the back of the bolt, and there's nothing in the buttstock at all. All of this is completely sealed and closed. What they've done instead is they have moved that spring and buffer system, or spring and, and system that causes the bolt to go into battery up here to the magazine tube. And this piece of metal looks a great deal similar to these pieces of metal. Now these pieces of metal on an 870 interface with the bottom of the bolt so that when you pump the gun, these action bars are actually connected to the forearm. They're not permanently connected, but they're between the way the gun's assembled, they're pinched in between there so that when you cycle this, it causes the gun to cycle. And you manually have to pump this gun, of course, pump action shotgun. But these action bars are interfaced with the bottom of that bolt and that is what causes that bolt to cycle like that. That's the way that system works. So basically what Franke have done is it's basically like they've taken the, these action bars and thought, well, why don't we, rather than having the action bars connect to the forearm so it has to be pumped, just put a spring in here and then make the gun an inertia-driven gun so that in order for it to cycle backwards, it just channels the forces between the lead wanting to go forward and the round wanting to go backward. That's what causes it to cycle backward, like this, when the gun's fired. And what will cause it to go back in battery is we'll just hook a spring around the the magazine tube and that's what will cause the gun to go back into battery instead of having to pump it or instead of having to have the buffer tube assembly everything behind the bolt. So that's why I looked at it and I thought wow that to me looks like basically they took a pump action shotgun and put this spring mechanism in there and then made the bolt assembly to where it's an inertia driven gun. It's just ingenious. Now the advantages that this gun has over other auto loading designs is that the second you take the forearm and or the forend and the barrel off of the gun you can access everything. You pull this bolt out, you can pull the whole bolt and everything out, you can wipe all this down, wipe everything down and oil it. You don't have to get in to this area of the shotgun with the buffer tube, buffer assembly, anything like that. If I took this gun waterfowl hunting and I dropped it in the swamp I would not need to pull the buttstock off and pull all of that spring and the plunger and everything else out of there or buffer or plunger, I don't know what you'd usually call it. You don't need to pull any of that stuff out of there to clean the gun. Everything is just right here. You pull the thing off, everything you need to clean is right there. If you want to take it apart further, you pull this bolt out or pull this um, bolt handle out and the whole bolt and all of this assembly will slide apart. Maybe I'll do that so I can show you this a little bit better. And then you can also pull this pin out right here and the entire trigger assembly will pop out of the gun. So the design is just incredibly simple. In my opinion, it is the best design of any auto loading shotgun I have ever seen. It, it, anyway, so that's one of the reasons why I'm a huge fan of this gun. Now, I'm going to take this part a little bit further to show you the way this interfaces. Pretty tough to get that out with my bare hands after you've had it for a long time and broken it in more, it's not as difficult. So here's the bolt assembly. And you can see this is just like an 870 or a Mossberg 590 or any of those that usually have a bolt that interfaces with the action bars like this. The only difference is instead of having to pump this the way you would pump an 870 or a Mossberg, it has the spring mechanism around the magazine tube. So that's the way that works. Now I'm going to reassemble this gun and try to explain some things as I'm doing that. So the things that I like about this gun apart from the design and like I said I think this design is the best auto-loading shotgun design I've ever seen. I think it's the simplest auto-loading shotgun design I have ever seen. So the things I like uh, about it apart from the design are that the shotgun is very lightweight, it is very reliable, 
the action is very smooth. Um, Franke has a seven year warranty on any shotgun that you buy from them, which is best in the business as far as I know. I think Remington's is one or two, maybe three years. Benelli's is about the same, three years or so. So I think this has a super good warranty, better than anybody else. And the price, this particular shotgun comes to market. Hold on one second while I finish putting this thing together. This particular shotgun comes to market at, I paid $600 for the shotgun. If you get a good deal, you can get this one for about 600. And then the other version, if you get a good deal on it, comes to market at about, and these are just the plain black synthetic models, at about 700. And the one that is $700, okay, there we go. The one that is $700 has three chokes. A modified choke, an improved cylinder, and a full choke. This particular shotgun doesn't come with any chokes, and it does not come with any shim adjustments for the buttstock. The version that's around $700 comes with the shim so that you can adjust the angle of your buttstock, and it also comes with those three chokes. So $600 for what I feel is the best auto loading design I've ever seen, extremely reliable. Essentially, this is a Benelli made in the same factory as a Benelli. The biggest difference being there will be a little bit more weight towards the front of the gun because they have moved that system up here instead of it being in the buttstock. I feel that's well worth the trade when it comes to maintenance and how easy it is to clean compared to the Benelli. So if you don't mind having an ounce or a few ounces more up here instead of back here and you're a Benelli fan or you're looking for a nursery driven shotgun, I think this is an excellent shotgun. So those are the things that I think makes the Franke Affinity such a great auto loading shotgun. I hope that this review gave you guys a little bit more in-depth look than what you've been able to find elsewhere. I know when I've tried to look up reviews for this particular shotgun, there's not very much information out there. And this shotgun, in my opinion, would be my number one choice for a two and three quarter and a three inch shotgun that is an inertia driven shotgun. Now, if you need a three and a half inch gun or something like that, I'll probably do some reviews on Versamax and some other shotguns later and talk about some of those different designs and what I would recommend in that area. But if you need a hunting shotgun for two and three quarter and three inch shells, this would be my number one recommendation for an inertia gun. If the recoil is just too much, I can understand going with a gas gun. That's perfectly understandable. Anyway, so that's my review of the Franke Affinity. If you guys have any questions or comments about this video, or there's some things that weren't really clear, which I suspect there may have been, um, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to respond back and explain any of the stuff better than I did in this video. So have a great day. See ya.